Okay, so today I'm going to be taking you guys through an in-depth look at all of the vendors that I have access to, uh, talking about what I affectionately refer to as the currency loop now, which is kind of a gear pattern where you can spend certain currency on certain things and just keep looping it together to get you know maximum amount of gear per your resources. Uh, and the changes in all the vendors is making 1.4 so much better than 1.3. So to kick it off with, I'll just start with the weapons vendor and the gear vendor inside the base of operations. As you can see, not much has really changed there. Um, it's some useless purples that you're not going to want for anyone that's at end game. And then there are, you know, there is one 229 piece. It's a PP19. It doesn't really matter what it is because this will be changing routinely over the course of the actual active live game. But the price points are something that's important to look at. It costs almost a million credits, but credits are actually vastly more abundant now because you actually get more per item that you sell. Uh, weapons are extremely valuable. You know, mods are much more valuable. So credits are going to kind of be raining from the sky, and you'll be able to pick up guns like this if you want to when there is a good one in the shop rotation. And there are some good content creators that do, you know, the weekly vendor resets. They cover them very in depth. Uh, and keeping an eye on keeping an eye on those after 1.4 is going to be increasingly valuable because. Uh, there will actually be some guns that you want as opposed to mostly guns that you're never going to use or touch Now moving down. This is one of the most important things These two vendors in the actual base of operations are the primary location to buy these basic sealed caches for 200,000 credits now a lot of people uh, Currently, I don't have those credits. I only have about 30,000 But a lot of people have millions of credits that they're not using or it's easy for them to obtain those millions of credits you're going to come here to buy these because they give 5 to 15 Phoenix credits when they're opened and a high-end gear piece. Now what that means is you can buy as many of these as you want with your credits, open them all, sell the gear that you don't want, buy a few more, open them, sell the gear, and then buy a couple more, open them, and sell the gear. At the end of that rotation, you'll have a ton of Phoenix credits having opened as many as you will. If, even if you start off with about a million, you'll still get upwards of 100, maybe 200 Phoenix credits at the end of that rotation. Um, and we'll go into later on what you can use those for because there's a greater variety of purposes that Phoenix credits can be used for now. So moving on to the gear vendor, it's kind of the same story. A lot of purples you're not going to use. There is one piece of 229 maxed out gear, but it's not really that good. In this instance, it's pads, which are never good in the high end form. Um, and then there is actually a prototype stamina mod, which is okay. Uh, and keeping an eye on which mod is here might be an easy way for you to get the specific pieces to round out a build once in a while. But again, the main attraction of these vendors is the basic sealed cash uh, for 200,000 credits. Moving on, we have a Dark Zone vendor in the base. If you've unlocked the certain you know um, key base of operations expansion to put him there. And this is a good example of the new format for Dark Zone vendors. Now, this is going to be the case with every Dark Zone vendor at every single checkpoint. Uh, they're going to have a selection of gear similar to this, um, but not exactly the same. And I will show you one of those uh, later on in a few minutes. Now you have some high-end pieces at 163. Again, they're not going to be uh, you know, helpful for anyone that's maxed out in gear score. Um, but you do have an electronics mod. It's not great. It's very low on the electronics roll. You do have a magazine that doesn't really matter. But the main attraction here in this specific vendor is a Dark Zone sealed cache for 50,000. Now, I know a lot of people that are running around with 6, 7, 8, 9, 20 million Dark Zone funds. And that can directly equate to 10 to 20 Phoenix credits per cache and a high end gear piece, which actually also has the opportunity of dropping a gear set piece. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong about that. But what this is, is another way to buy sealed caches with your currency, convert that into more items and Phoenix credits. Now, once you've opened all of the Dark Zone sealed caches that you can buy or that you want to buy, you can sell all the gear from those that you don't want, uh, which directly equates to an increased amount of regular credits because everything is selling for more now. You can come right back to this weapons vendor or the gear vendor and pick up more of these basic sealed caches, open those, get more Phoenix credits, and then you're good to go. Uh, that's what I call the currency loop right now. There is one third portion to that, uh, which I'll demonstrate in a second. But really quickly, if we run upstairs here, up into the tech wing, there is no longer the special vendor here next to the recalibration station. He has moved and has some different you know, stock and selections. However, he is not up here anymore. Okay, so here we are at the hub in the underground uh, this is a very important place now and very, very valuable to people that are maxed out in their gear score. Uh, there's a couple things to note about the change here that don't actually have to do with vendors. Firstly, there is a recalibration station down here now, which is really nice. But secondly, the special vendor is now located here, special equipment vendor. And he has a very interesting selection. So 
We talked about all the sealed caches first, and we'll get to that in a moment, but he has some, some named weapons. He has the Valkyrie, the Historian, the Liberator. He has some other maxed out weapons for a large amount of Phoenix credits, and this is where you'll spend all those credits that you accumulated from opening those caches. Uh, there might be some really good guns here from time to time. We have a Vicious Self-Preserved converted SMG9, very strong. You can reroll Ferocious to um, something like Unforgiving or Responsive. Uh, there's a lot of potential here with this vendor, and when he resets, I think a lot of people are going to be very interested in what he has to offer. He also sells some maxed out pieces of gear. If you're really looking for Firecrest, you can obtain that here. Uh, it's not like before where you wouldn't really be able to fill in the blanks on your pieces of gear unless you were maxed out underground rank or something like that. There are a lot of mechanisms to fill in your builds now, this being one of them. There's a lot of different types of gear here. Uh, a bunch of holsters, you know, some gloves, etc. There's some good mods, you know, you have a stamina mod with skill power, there's a performance mod with self heal, and in fact that right there is going to be something that I'm going to pick up four of for a build that I'm doing very soon, hopefully within the next day, and demonstrating how powerful and self tanky you can be using mods like that. However, again, there's a bunch of other things, and they are fairly pricey on the Phoenix credit side of things, uh, and then the good old Dune Jacket and Ranger Jacket. Moving on, we have the sealed catches. Now this is the real attraction for this vendor in my eyes. All of those Phoenix credits, as you can see, I have about 700 from doing this trick a, a few times, you know, during the PTS, can be spent on either a weapon sealed cache, a gear sealed cache, a mod sealed cache, and that's actually really important, and it's very difficult for me to get mods right now in the PTS. This is one of the primary ways I've done it, and a gear set specific sealed cache. All of these things cost about a, they cost 100 Phoenix credits, and they are the way that you finally close the loop on this currency exchange that goes through dark zone credits, regular credits, to gear, back to regular credits, to more sealed caches, to, to phoenix credits, then to here, to these sealed caches, to specific pieces of gear. Uh, you close the loop with this, it's a very lucrative way to get specific pieces of gear, like if you really need weapons, buy you know, 10 of these um, after doing this loop as soon as 1.4 drops, and you'll be a very happy camper. So that's something really important to note about the vendors. Moving on, we do have another vendor here, Special Blueprints. Now this vendor sells a lot of things. They have the weapon kit recipes, of course. Um, they have a bunch of weapon recipes. They have uh, electronics, firearms mask, uh, angle grips. They have some very good stuff here that is actually quite valuable. It is maxed out in its gear score. It's power level 33. This is important to look at. Um, it's the top tier of items that you can craft. Uh, now some of them are not actually power level 33. Uh, level requirement 30, These uh, the knee pads, blueprint, I'm not really sure exactly, it's a gear score 204, um, but some of them actually are, you know, power level 33 maxed out, these are 204, uh, some other ones are power level 32, it's important to always look at what you're buying and what the level, you know, stat points are, however, this does have access to some of the best gear in the game, which will now be craftable, so anyone that was kind of, you know, having a gripe with 1.3 because it didn't actually have the best gear in the game that you could craft, they missed that crafting aspect of this game, you will be happy, you'll be provided for, and there's no need to worry. Okay, so as we go into this Dark Zone checkpoint, uh, I'm going to go to the map really quickly and show you something. Uh, we are at one of the Dark Zone checkpoints. There are many. There's one here, there's one here, there's one here, 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 and over there. There's a bunch of them. Now, at every single one is a vendor, and the vendor now has new stock, new items, and increased value. Now they are fairly pricey. They do cost about two to three hundred thousand for for some guns, um, you know, one hundred fifty for some of the armor for the mods, etc. One hundred thirty, um, and about one hundred seventy for for the the reflex sites. But what they have is they have a weapon, they have a you know a piece of uh, you know armor, knee pads, they have a mod, they have a scope, and then they have a dark zone sealed cache. Um, again, this is one of the main attractions. But each vendor has a different set of items, and you can go around, and each vendor probably. Uh, between all of the vendors, there will be something that you want. There will be something that actually can upgrade either one or all of your builds, whether it be a mod. Um, as you can see, item level 33. This is an electronics mod with armor. So if I had the proper funds to buy this mod, uh, unfortunately, this is a fresh character for me. I don't actually have my own PC character, so I'm kind of bottlenecked into making new ones, and then I have to get the rank and the, and the, the Dark Sun funds. But... If I was on an actual PC character that I had farmed up, like most people going into patch 1.4, I could say, okay, well, I need to make a Seeker Mind build, 
I can get electronics mods with armor. This is the perfect place to do that. I'm not going to go it go to every single Dark Zone vendor right now and show you the different stocks, but I can tell you for a fact they will have different items and there are some great content creators, like I said before, that will cover the weekly vendor resets, what's best, what's not, and that will actually be very valuable after 1.4. So this mod in particular is what stands out to me as being something really good that a lot of people are going to get some use out of. So if this translate dire translates directly into the live game for this vendor in particular, for a week, everyone will have their electronics and armor needs satisfied. Um, I would actually be looking for a prototype stamina mod with armor um, at one of the under other vendors, and I would hope that that would show up. I'd be looking for something like a better M44. Um, there's about seven chances to get that with all the different ones. And then, of course, if I had spare Dark Zone funds that I didn't really, you know, want to spend on a specific item here, I would be buying the sealed caches all the time, getting the Phoenix credits, and then, you know, looping into that, that currency trade and that currency exchange system so that I could go and get the Phoenix credit sealed caches at the end or just re-roll an extra amount of guns after I've opened a bunch of these caches. So that's going to wrap it up. Um, that is your standard Dark Zone vendor. Again, there are a bunch of them, so don't just uh, go to the same one that I went to. Go to every single one and check out all the different stocks that are there. Um, I go back to the base if you need to. The, the safe houses are the one last thing that actually I almost completely forgot about, and I should go check out. Uh, I'm not going to show you every single safe house. I'll just show you a snapshot of one of the types. Uh, one of the safe houses, the weapon safe house that's over here. And you'll be able to see that there is a vastly increased selection of weapons at these safe houses so now it actually brings us to a specific point dark zone uh rank is relevant now as you can see i'm only 25 so it doesn't really apply to me uh but on my main character i am 50 i have deranked significantly during the course of uh 1.3 because i was not really prepared for the shotgun meta and i got devastated quite a few times i would go manhunt and then fight to the death repeatedly because dark zone rank uh didn't really matter at all and that was unfortunate so but it resulted in me losing my rank and now having to, to reclimb. However, it's not going to be too hard to do so. Um, I'm in a really you know glassy build right now that's not very strong So uh, on the toughness standpoint. So that's why I'm getting melted by NPCs. But NPCs are, are vastly weaker. So getting to these safe houses, for people that normally may have had some concerns about that, like, well, I don't really want to go in the dark zone. The, the NPCs are so hard. I get trapped somewhere. I don't feel like being in there by myself and um, you know getting one-shotted by not only other players, but NPCs. That won't happen to you anymore. Um, it's very easy to get to these safe houses, and once you do, if you do have the Dark Zone rank, even if you know, you know it took you a long time to grind up to it, or um, etc., you know you, you don't really uh, have a squad to play with, and you had to farm DZ one, you know the entire time. And even if you are a lower Dark Zone rank, uh, you can still actually buy something. So it's not even just geared towards where you have to be seventy or ninety nine or or ninety or something like that. Um, there really is a, a lot of potential with these vendors oh well wire gaming decided to kill me oh well maybe i can respawn at this safe house uh let's see checkpoint no i can't i'm gonna have to go over to the checkpoint and then run back um hopefully i don't get you know ambushed uh people do know my name now sometimes and it often results in a griefing situation where they'll camp me um but that's probably just a standard and and that's a good demonstration of solo play and how it's really risky you know i was trying just trying to get into the safe house i couldn't make it work someone was looking for pvp and that's going to happen significantly more now with patch 1.4 um, just for anyone that's kind of uh, wondering about that, since they've made it so abundantly clear that you can acquire the best gear in the game all over the game, all over the persistent world, pretty much the only people that are going to be in the dark zone are going to be actively looking for PvP. Yes, there may be some other people that are doing some other activities. However, mostly it's going to be like-minded people like myself or others who are looking for just PvP. And as a result of that, uh, it's going to be an even more dangerous place than it previously was. So that's something to keep in mind. That might be something that a lot of people take into consideration before going in or just avoid it altogether because it's not going to be something that's... It's not a very safe place. So let's enter this safe house. I'll show you really quickly. This is the last type of vendor. Again, I'm not going to go to every single safe house. However, it does follow this pattern. There's a lot of really good gear that you can get. Uh, and it's important to note that this change has happened because it'll prepare you for 1.4. People can go through the vendors and upgrade their gear really quickly. So this is the weapon vendor, and as you can see, he has a lot of maxed out weapons. Now, among all of these weapons, there's got to be something that would actually be a good thing to buy. Now, we have a converted SMG9 with Fierce, Determined and Self-Preserved aren't great, but you could leave Self-Preserved, roll off Determined, uh, unless you're a skill build, maybe, you know, do it the other way around. This ACR is uh, it's decent. It's not something you're gonna bat an eyelash though, and you know probably incorporate. Oh my gosh, you need to have that. It's not gonna be the case. You have this M44, which is really cool, skilled, vicious, unforgiving. I'm actually a big fan of this. Um, I would probably re-roll skilled for brutal, and then that would be a really nice uh, addition to uh, my build actually. 
Uh, and then we have this military M60 with sustained ferocious and capable. Now, this right here is a selection of maxed out gear, the best that there is in the game. And every other vendor in the Dark Zone has a selection similar of maxed out gear, whether it be gear mods or, um, you know, gear set stuff in DZ6 or regular, you know, high end armor components in DZ3. So checking those out every single week is going to be really important to making sure that you don't miss anything that's valuable and it's going to be much more valuable to have Dark Zone rank from here on out. As you can see, rank 30 is the only thing required to buy all of these. I'm sure that there will be higher requirements in the other safe houses from time to time or maybe it'll be static 30 across the board, in which case it'll be really easy to achieve and even a solo player could come in here for an hour and a half, uh, put on the Banshee set, get increased funds and not lose experience when you die and get well up over 30 and just be able to buy this gear, which is, in, in that case, that'd be a really cool mechanic. Uh, I'd be giving a lot of players access to different gear and more of it that they wouldn't have had access to before, uh, and I'm all about it. It's versatile, it helps you min-max correctly, um, and I'm a big fan of it. So that's the end of my vendor overview, the snapshot of this game, how the vendors have changed in 1.4. Uh, again, there's so many of them that you're going to be able to check them out for hours on upon hours as soon as every single weekly reset happens, um, making sure that there's something you can buy or maybe there's something you can't buy, um, et cetera, et cetera, and min-maxing your build. So I'm really excited for it. I think everyone else should be too. And if you have any feedback on this, please leave it in the comments below. If you want to support the channel, please check out the links in the description below. And as always, guys, have a nice day.